Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us on our third live event um, here brought to you by our Chula Vista Elementary School District's Innovation and Instruction Team. Uh, my name is Mrs. Hughes, and I'm with the Energy Station, where our curriculum is all about renewable energy. And before we get started, I wanted to uh, quickly give a shout out and a thanks to all our community partners who have participated and helped us through the school year, this beginning of the school year. Um, that would include the City of Chula Vista, our Chula Vista Public Library, SDG and E, of course, and all the men and women at IBW Chapter 569, as well as NECA, who are keeping the lights on for us in this crazy world right now. So thank you so much for all your help. Thank you for participating and being part of our energy station. We really appreciate it. Um, also on the back end, we have Mr. Bruder and Mr. Garcia, who are gonna be taking your questions and comments in the chat. So as we go through our demonstration this afternoon, feel free to type something in there. Um, we'll see if your question gets online to me and I'd be, try to, I'd be happy to try to answer anything that you guys bring up um, in the session right now. So let's look at some of the goals we have for the next half hour. We're going to be looking at a couple different objectives. Number one, we're going to be exploring how energy actually moves, specifically wind energy. We're going to be learning how wind energy moves at different temperatures and what that does for, for objects. And of course, you're here because you want to build a solar tower. So we're gonna be building a solar tower that actually can spin a wheel using air, using the sun, and without any electricity or any batteries. And at the end of our session, if you're a good listener and you're quick on your fingers, we have a, a Kahoot game that we're gonna be playing interactively. So you can join us with that if you have the app or if you just wanna play along for fun in the chat. So let's look, take a look at these things and kind of get our brains thinking about what energy is. I want you to look at these photos. I want you to think, what do all three of these have in common? If you have some answers, go ahead and drop, drop them in the chat for us. What do you think all three of these have in common? We have a hot air balloon on the left. We have um, a hot drink on the, in the center there with some steam coming out of it. And we have a photo on the right of a hot air uh, popcorn popper. So if you say, well, they all have air, it's something to do with it, you're absolutely right. And they all have specifically hot air involved with that. And that's gonna lead to our topic about how to build a solar tower. So let's talk about the energy that those th three things are producing. Um, the word energy and transfer, energy transfer, transfer is a synonym. It actually also means the word move. So energy transfers or moves from different places. Um, there's three vocabulary words we're gonna focus on to understand this. The first word is called radiation. Now you've probably heard of that before. Radiation comes in the form of waves. So for example, if you're outside on a nice sunny day at the beach or at the park, that sun that's shining is giving off radiation. Maybe a fireplace. If you're in front of the fireplace, it's going to be getting cooler here now that it's fall. If you're next to a fire pit or some kind, that radiation off the flames is a type of energy transfer. So we're going to use a little hand gesture to remind ourselves of what radiation means. So if you have your hands up ready, we're just going to use our fingers and blink like this to show that the radiation is going off in waves. All right, very good. Okay, our next word to talk about how energy moves and transfer is conduction. Now, conduction is a little bit different. Conduction uses energy and transfers through contact or touch. So if you see in that photo there, that picture there, um, the hand is touching the handle of a pot. So that pot we know is hot. When you touch that as well, that energy is transferring to your hands. So we always wanna be careful, boys and girls, when we're in the kitchen, to be careful around things near a stove because that's gonna conduct heat and could transfer to you. So the way we're gonna remember that, since it's with touch, is use your hands again, and we're just gonna clap. Ready? Conduction. Okay, so conduction is gonna be by touch. The next one is going to be the one we're gonna focus on the rest of our afternoon, which is convection. Now, convection is a little bit different. Convection doesn't use touch, it uses um, circular motion through either air 
or liquids. In this case of our, our image, the water is boiling, and so the heat is circulating through the hot water, okay? So for convection, we're gonna use circles. So using your hands, let's go ahead and make a circle motion. And that means convection. So we have three types of energy movements or transfers. So let's try them again. We have radiation, we have conduction, and we have convection, good. So as I said, convection is gonna be the one we're gonna to use today for our solar tower. There are two things I want you to remember, some concepts, and by the way, did I say there's a Kahoot at the end? So you might wanna pay attention to this. Two key things you wanna remember about convection. One, hot air rises, okay? Hot air rises, so it means it floats up into the air but eventually it cools down. So we call that a sink. So cold air sinks to the bottom and then it repeats all over again in a circular motion. Think of it this way, boys and girls. If you were ever in or have been in a, uh, a multi-story building, okay, two-story building or any place where it has more than one floor, where is it usually cooler in that building? Is it the bottom floor? or the higher floors, okay? So usually the cooler floor is gonna be the bottom floor. If you go upstairs, it's probably gonna be a little bit warmer to you. And that's because convection currents have circulated and the hot air is rising up to the higher places in that building. So let's apply those three words and think about more of our photos again. Why do you think these all, or what do you think they all have in common? We know it's hot air. How are the balloons moving? Hot air makes a float, so the hot air is rising and pushing up those balloons. What's happening with our drink? The hot air is giving off steam vapor, so that heat is expelling from the drink and it's going off into the cooler air. And then with our popcorn popper, well, if you're not using a microwave, that's a little bit different, but air poppers use just air, a little bit healthier, don't you think? Okay, so. We are now going to be talking about how to make your solar tower. So in a moment here, I'm going to show you some materials. By the way, since we are doing this as a live stream, if you don't have all your materials ready, totally OK. You can always pause, grab some things, come back and join us, or we will have these archived later on our YouTube channel. So here's some materials that you're going to need for your solar tower. Dark paper. I'm going to talk a little bit more about why specifically dark paper. If you do not have dark paper, construction paper, um, white paper is fine. Maybe you can scribble with a black marker or a crayon and just darken that up. Even dark blue paper is fine, but darker paper would it definitely would work for this. Um, some more paper to make a square. So any other type of paper like notebook paper, craft paper, um, anything to just form a little square and cut that out some long sticks. So there's lots of possibilities here. If you have some sticks outside in your backyard, grab some of those. Maybe we can tape some of them together to make them longer. Um, if you have a wooden skewer, chopsticks, a long pencil, um, possibly a straw, but you know, sometimes plastic straws are not the best thing, paper straws perhaps, uh, but anything that's long to create the length of our tower, probably about nine inches is a good length. A pencil, scissors, tape, and a push pen. Okay, so if you have those materials, you can go ahead and grab those. Um, as I'm getting my materials ready, I'm gonna be actually changing to over to my dock cam. So this is a good opportunity, boys and girls. If you have any questions, if you'd like to put them in the chat for Mr. Bruder and Mr. Garcia, we can take those. All right, so I'll get this ready. Any questions right now, Mr. Bruder? We have brewing in our chat room? Yes, we have some yes. great ones. Uh, we have one from Nash about, will this solar tower that we're building actually be able to gather the sun's energy? I hope so, and it actually will. So hold on to that thought, Nash, because we're gonna make the tower. I'll be honest, you're gonna have to have a little bit of patience for this. It's not gonna be something that's automatic. We're not making this from a kit. So think of what your design is going to be doing for you, but you will have to have a little bit of patience so we can add on to that material list. But yes, the sun is actually going to help us make this tower work. Thanks, All right, thank you. 
OK, so I have some rights materials gathered. Um, I have my paper, my dark paper, my paper already formed into a square, my pen, my pin, my tape, my scissors. So I'm going to move some of the stuff off to the side just to get it out of the way and focus only on my paper, my black paper. All right, so this part, again, as we're making this, again, have some patience because some of you might be like, oh my gosh, this might be kind of hard or I, I can't do it. Don't say can't, you just can say, I can't do it just yet. That's a good way to think of how things are. Growth mindset, boys and girls. Okay, so I have actually two pieces of dark paper. I'm gonna overlap them just a little bit because I do want this to be a long tower, but not super long. And these are just like eight and a half by 11 construction paper. I'm gonna get my tape and I'm gonna go ahead and tape them together. Okay, so I'm gonna go and tape this together here. And I have some other tape I put off to the side already, pre-cut. Okay, all right, so that's a fairly long piece of paper. If you wanna tape on the back, you can certainly do that as well. Maybe just to secure it a little bit more. All right, and then our next step is we're gonna form a cone. So this is where you might need some little hand dexterity practice. I'm gonna grab one corner of my paper and I'm gonna roll it up, roll it on up, all the way to the other end of this corner here. Okay, and again, you might need some practice with this. Okay, now you're thinking, well, that's not a cone, right? Not yet. So to make a cone, think of, of cone shapes you've seen already. I think you're probably thinking you're writing ice cream cone, right? Okay, so ice cream cone is sort of shaped like a triangle shape, but it's a 3D shape. So I want this more to be like a triangle shape where it's thinner at the one end and wider at the other end. So I'm gonna hold my left end of my, my soon to be cone, not too tight. And with my other hand, I'm gonna just insert it and kind of push it gently to widen this top. Okay, you see what I did there? So I held this closed to keep it not as wide at the bottom, and I just opened this up a little at the top. Okay, so I'll try it one more time. If you've missed that, grab the corner, roll it up. And again, if you're like, like me, maybe take a couple times of practice. Okay, I have this end I'm holding down and I'm gonna push this open just a tad. All right, okay, see the difference? Thinner on one end, wider at the top. Now, when you get yourself ready and you think, okay, I think I got it down, I wanna tape this. You're gonna to wanna to put some tape and hold some tape apart and leave it off to the side because you're gonna to wanna to keep this still or get someone else to help you with their hands and now tape these down. Okay. So I'm going to tape it down so my cone stays relatively still in place. Okay. All right, so I got my cone. Now the next step is we want this to stand up like a tower, but I can already tell that this little tail, if I stand this up, you can't see really with my dog cam in this position, it's not going to stand up. So I'm going to need to trim this off. So I'm going to use my pencil and just kind of eyeball this. And I'm actually going to cut a little bit further, right about there. Okay. Again, if you're if you really want to measure it out, do it. You can just really measure it out. I'm just going to go and eyeball it. And I'm going to trim this bottom part of my cone off so it stays still. Okay. I think this one's only needs a little bit more of a trim. Now here's a cool thing. Use your imagination. I know there's some really creative kids out there. If you don't even have this type of paper, you know what I realized I had in my closet? I had an old party hat and I trimmed this. And we're gonna talk about what's gonna happen with these bottom parts. But this was a party hat, birthday party hat. So you could use that. That's already in the shape of a cone, right? Okay, it's not quite as tall as we need to, but it can still work. All right, so now I'm going to, with my cone at the bottom, we want the cold air to rush in. If I just stand this up right now, there's nothing that's getting into this. So I'm going to draw a couple of little, uh, I'm going to call them doors, and I'm going to draw little doors at the bottom where the air can push through. 
Okay, so I would say make them about the length of your, maybe your pinky finger. And you're gonna draw like a little rectangle. You're gonna kind of eyeball this. I would say about two to three. So there's one, and I'll move over. You can see this here better. There's two, and maybe cut into this tape a tad. That's okay, three, okay? And the reason why we're doing this again is because we want to let the cool air, which is at the bottom, remember cool air sinks, come in and meet where the warm air, or where we can make it warmer, inside the cone. Okay, there's one little door. As I'm cutting here, if we have any other questions, Mr. Brute or Mr. Garcia, they can field those for you, and I'd be happy to take anything at this moment. Maybe some clarification questions. Yes, yes. Mrs. Smith. I have a couple questions for you from our attendees. Uh, one from Ariana. I think you'll love this question because I know you teach a lot about it down there at the energy station. What are the different types of energy that exist? I'm sorry, what are the different types of? Energy that exists. Oh, wow, that's an awesome question. Well, you know, energy is so cool because it's in so many different forms and we've been talking about the movement, but since we're at the energy station, since we talk about renewable energy, we're talking about energy that can be used and be renewed over and over and over. So for example, sun and wind, which we're gonna be doing, there's something called biomass, there's another form called hydroelectric, and there's even another form called geothermal. So if well, eventually, if you guys come to the energy station, you're gonna to get to learn all about those five energies. Okay, so now my next goal, I'm cutting up some more tape here to put off the side. I have my tower all set, but I don't have the wheel. You know what, I'm gonna tape this down. This guy's bothering me here. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side. So now I'm gonna make my wheel with my square. And I'm thinking in my head, I've seen um, pinwheels at the store before. And I know those have like four kind of triangular shapes. So I'm gonna make four triangles out of my square. So think of some geometry here. I'm good to do that. I'm just gonna cut this down with this pencil and mark it and make an X. Okay, so I made that X. These are gonna be my four blades to my wheel. Now I'm eventually gonna cut through these, but if I cut them all the way through, I'm just making four triangles. I don't wanna have to cut it completely apart. So I'm gonna draw a circle in the center. And that's kind of a, like my boundary to stop. All right, so I'm not gonna cut past the circle. Okay, don't cut past the circle. So I'm gonna take my scissors and start cutting along the lines I just drew, but not go past the circle. Draw another line, don't go past the circle. And another one. And you know what? I would really love to see if you guys can. I mean, I'm using paper, again, it's handy, but make this with recycled paper. For what recycling, all that stuff we use, your families use, and how the printers, don't throw it away. You can totally use that paper for this project. Because if you mess up, you know, it's not a big deal. Okay, so now I have four pieces of tape. I'm going to form these into my blade. So to watch me, we're going to take one corner. I'm going to turn it and flip it towards the center of the circle. Okay, so watch again. Take the corner, flip it towards the center of the circle, and then I'm going to tape it down. Okay. Now, if you look closely, I didn't push this all the way down. I'm just making a little bit of a wave or a curl. And if you think about it, that's where the air is gonna come in and get captured. Okay, so there's one little curl for my blades. There's another one. And if your tape overlaps, that's totally okay. All right, I'm gonna do another one. This tape's a little bit long. I'll cut that in half. All right, oops, maybe too short. Get down there, tape. See, it's a great thing we can just improve upon that. All right, there we go, that's, that's staying. Let me get one more piece so they didn't cut off. 
All right, cool. Hope you guys are getting your hands dirty with me right now. I'm kind of building away. All right, so there you go. There's my pinwheel. All right, looks pretty much like the ones I see at the store, right? So I have my tower. I have my pinwheel. Now I just need the stick. Now remember in the materials, I said if you could get a push pin, that's going to be handy because essentially we're going to take this and balance this. That's going to be really fun. Balance this on the stick. And so the pin is just slightly thinner than the tip of my stick. If you have a stick from your backyard, you're definitely going to want to have a push pin because those sticks I'm sure are pretty thick. So I'm going to get some more tape. And boys and girls, this is the part two. Again, if you need some extra adult supervision or help, someone go with their hands. Um, because we want to be safe with pins. I'm going to put the tape down and lay my stick here. Just so it's easier and put the pin in, uh, alongside it and just kind of roll it like I'm rolling a burrito. Or sushi. Hope you guys had lunch today. <laughs> OK, here we go. All right, so that little guy's. Attached to my stick. So again, so now you kind of see the goal that we have for our tower. If you have your stick is really thick, um, you're definitely going to want this pin. All right, so now I have my three components, tower, wheel, stick. Now we're going to put it together. So while I'm setting this up so you guys can actually see how my tower is working, again, we can field a couple more questions if we like. I'm going to angle my camera so we can get this started. Are there any other questions, Mr. B, that we maybe have from our our audience? Sure, if it's okay with you, I have two great ones to share with you. All right. We have one from a second grader at, uh, at Olympic View. Go Golden Eagles. Awesome. What does solar mean? What does solar mean? Well, solar means about the sun, anything to do with the sun. So I don't know how many of you maybe have solar panels on your house. We see them pretty much everywhere now. Um, what those solar panels are doing is collecting energy and turning it into um, power for homes and buildings. And so it's so great because you're not paying for it, right? I mean, you might be you're paying for um, maybe the panels to be installed, but the sun is our free energy, which is super cool. So my friend at Olympic View, I hope you, you learn more about solar as you guys get into the grades. It's a really cool um, thing to have around and, and very, very useful in so many ways, as we're going to see here. So I've set up my tower. And again, what I've done is I have my tower here. Now, what I didn't show you is that underneath of this is a base. So again, you're going to have to kind of think and get use your imagination. I'm trying to get that autofocus a little bit better for you. Um, Use your imagination and think, what can I use to um, hold my stick up and keep it keep it straight? OK, maybe it's a piece of Play-Doh. Maybe it's um, some Legos you have. You can make a little stand for them. But you're going to need to find a way, get creative, to have the stick with the pin stay upright. OK, so that's something that you can kind of brainstorm. What can we do to make it upright? OK, so in my case, I have this um, Play-Doh and I have the base and the stick down. I'm going to put this over it and there's our little slits for the cool air. And here's the part that's going to take some patience. I have my wheel. I'm going to balance it right on the tip of that pin. And I've even folded this and kind of give it some creases to kind of like grab onto it better. So let's see if I can do this. Oops, first. First try. Let's try it. So I'm going to balance it on there. Whoop, not quite. Look at that. OK. But you're like, wait, but it's not working. You're right, because we don't have any sun. <laughs> we're, 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 I'm inside a room right now. It is balancing. It's moving a little bit, but it's mostly because of my hand motions, right? It's probably keeps spinning a little bit. So because we're not in a room that has a whole lot of sunlight, you're definitely going to want to find a spot that has um, a well-lit window or perhaps even set this tower up outside with not a lot of wind because you don't want the wind to blow this off. Um, but for the sake of time, what I'm going to do is show you a time lapse, time lapse example of what this tower could look like for you and what the functioning tower actually does. So we're going to go ahead and segue to that video in just a moment. 
But yeah, as you're still crafting, maybe you can see if you can get your tower to balance like mine. So let me share with you this video and see how hers turned out. Okay, so she has the same setup. She's put the cone over the stick. She actually has a needle at the top of hers. Uh, so again, a pin or a needle would be fine. And she's gonna balance her wheel on top of the pin. And you notice she's at a door frame that has a, an open window. There's lots of sunlight coming through there. Okay, it's spinning a little bit. Now we, we didn't really talk about the paper. Why dark paper? If you want to throw in the chat, why do you think dark paper? Now, if you said because dark absorbs light better, you're absolutely right. Think about if you've ever been outside and you wear dark colors on a hot day, you're gonna get hotter than your friend who's wearing light colors, okay? So dark absorbs heat and light a lot better, okay? All right, so let's take a look at, that's a great way of seeing how conven convection is actually working, all right? Okay, so we learned a lot in these last couple of minutes. And so now we're gonna wrap things up. We're gonna take a to Kahoot quiz. So we've learned about heat, we've learned about air. Um, if you want to play, here's how it's gonna go. When you play Kahoot, you can't leave this um, session. You wanna open up a new window, not a tab, a new window so you can see both my screen that has the questions and then your answer screen or if you wanna play on a device, you can do that. Um, you're gonna to go to kahoot.it or use the app and that's the pin to play the game, okay? So while you're doing that, we're gonna wait a little bit. I have one more little video to show you how convection works. And this is really cool. I have this object called a radiometer, long word radiometer, but it's essentially um, a wheel with light and dark color panels inside, inside a glass case. Now in the shade, this is what it's doing. Watch what happens when I move it into the sun. Isn't that crazy? So there's another great example of how convection works. The sun is already heating up the air inside that glass bowl. Isn't that cool? Okay. So we're going to keep waiting for some friends to join in. I'm going to hop over and see what our uh, Kahoot game looks like. And let's see how that is going. All right. Oh, my goodness. Wow, we got some players in there. Okay, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, we're getting up there. Mrs. Hughes, Somebody. while we wait for some of our uh, viewers to join us, do you have a chance to answer another question? Absolutely. Joe had a question about how the, the building that we made, the solar tower, is going to convert the sunlight into energy. I know you shared a little bit about that, but if you could tell us a little more. Thank you, Joe. So actually, this is a prototype, all right? So in a, in a real situation, as far as like wind turbines work, a real wind turbine, if you've seen those out, um, for example, in Palm Springs, or if you've driven out to El Centro, we have a couple wind farms in valleys. The wind is blowing through there. It's not using solar. But those turbines, which is the wheel we just made, right, the wheel we just made, they're connected to other pieces of machinery that transfer even more into something called electrical energy, okay? So we know electrical energy is because it's what's powering your laptop right now, right, or your TV. Electricity is all around us, and when we plug things in, that's where that's coming from. So the one we've made, you know, we're just using the sun, the heat of the sun to power the, the black um, to absorb the heat for the black paper and make that air move up because remember we said hot air rises and the hot air is actually pushing the wheel. Now to turn into real energy, that would take a lot more machinery involved. And that's why just wind turbines that you see out in those farms work so well. They're just using only the wind and they're changing things into mechanical energy and then changing those into electrical energy for, for homes all over the place. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Bruder? Sure. One more question while we have some more people join our Kahoot game. 
You mentioned the different types of renewable energy sources. One of our viewers was asking, what exactly is geothermal energy? Oh, that's a great question. So those of us who maybe know some prefixes, and you might know if you've been in the younger grade, primary grade, but hopefully if you're even in fourth grade, you might be studying this um, about geography and landforms. The prefix geo, G-E-O, means land. And I'm betting you guys can guess what thermal means. Okay, maybe you have a thermos, keeping things cool or keeping the heat out. Thermal means warm. So when you combine them together, geothermal means heat from the earth. So geothermal energy doesn't use the sun, doesn't use the wind, is using the heat from the earth. And if you can think of places that have heat from the earth, that actually would be volcanoes. Is that crazy? So volcanic energy, geothermal energy, underground in our earth, is producing heat and the heat is combined with water to make steam and the steam moves these wheels. So all these wheels we've been making are actually essential to making different types of energy work because they're different types of turbines. So um, like Hawaii is a great place that has geothermal energy. A lot of places up in northern um, United States have geothermal energy as well. So excellent question. Thanks, right, Mr. Bruce, how are we doing here with our, our participants? I see the numbers are just going up like crazy. Yeah, we have a whole lot of people in this Kahoot game. I think we're ready to get it started. Okay. All right. So again, fast fingers, good listening. Let's see how this goes. And if you jump in late, just try to put your answer in the chat. All right. So we have six questions ready to start. All right. Building a solar tower. Here they come. All right, first word or first question. Energy that moves through air or water is called what? I hope you guys get this one. I'm talking a lot about air that moves through air or water is called what? Is it the red box heat, the blue box conduction, the yellow box convection, or the green box radiation? Air that moves through air or water. I'm remembering my hand signal. Air or water, which one is that? All right, we see I got about almost over 50 answers, but they're coming in fast. All right, again, heat is gonna be red, our triangle, conduction blue, our diamond, yellow, convection, the circle, or radiation. Which one is it? Radiation is gonna be our square. All right, and the answer, is so gonna be in the top here. We're gonna find out our answer is, ooh, okay, convection. It looks like it was kind of split across the board. So remember boys and girls, convection is this, okay, moving in circles, okay? All right, that was pretty close there. It looks like, uh, who are we gonna have as our winner for that one? Alyssa, 985, good job, Alyssa. Okay, next question. Energy that moves by contact is called. So we know it's not convection. We can take that one away. Energy that's moved by contact. Remember, contact by touch. Is it called heat? It's a red and triangle. Is it conduction? Diamond, blue. Is it convection? Circle, yellow, or is it radiation, green, square? Energy that moves by contact, by touch. And hopefully through process of elimination, you can think of which of those three it could be. All right, couple more seconds. All right, almost there, and let's see. And our winner, our fastest on the draw here. Okay, we know the answer is conduction. All right, much better, you guys. So I think for process of elimination, we figured out it was this one. Let's see who it, oh, Alyssa, wow. She's got some fast fingers. She's keeping the leaderboard, good job. Addison's right behind there. Okay, next question. In convection, hot air does what? Rises, that's our red triangle, 
sinks, blue diamond, stays still, yellow circle, or disappears, green square. What is happening with convection? All right, if we remember what we talked about, convection is about moving in a circle. Air and water, how is it moving in that circle? Is it going to rise or sink, stay still or disappear? All right, you got a couple more answers coming in. Think about it, convection. All right, and our answer to this question is, it rises. Good job, you guys definitely got that one. Let's see who is in the lead for that question. Oh my goodness, wow. Okay, we need to be on her team. Look at that, Alyssa, she is quick. All right, question number four. The place with the coolest temperature inside a two-story building or a multi-story building is going to be where? Is it the backyard? Red triangle? Is it the top floor? Blue diamond? Is it the attic? Yellow circle? Or is it the bottom floor? Green square. Remember what the sentence is asking, the question. The place with the coolest temperature the coolest temperature. Okay, is it the backyard? Is it the top floor? Is it the attic? Maybe some of us might not have attics. Or is it the bottom floor? I can tell a lot of people must be thinking hard and their answers are not coming as quickly as time. They're like, hmm, what could it be? I don't want to pick the wrong color. All right, and our answer to this one is the bottom floor. Good job, you guys. Okay, remember the bottom floor is always gonna be cooler because air, cool air sinks. And let's see if Alyssa's still on it. Oh, Tanner has taken the lead. Okay, now it's a battle. Okay, next question. This is a true or false. We still get the same amount of time though. Heat is best absorbed by light colors. True or false? True is blue, false is red. Heat is best absorbed when we're taking in, like our cone is taking in light by light colors. So our light colors would be like white, pastels, our dark colors, black, blue, green, red, purple, dark colors. Okay, you still have a lot of time, so it's pretty much going to be a 50-50 chance here. Let's see who's going to be in the lead. Heat is best absorbed, taken in, by light colors. I love how you guys are participating with, with this, by the way. I hope you guys are enjoying all the questions and having fun with this. It's, it's kind of a nice way to connect with our, the rest of our school district. You're right, it is false. Light colors reflect off the heat. All right. Let's see who's in the lead. Oh, Alyssa gained the lead back. Wow, barely. All right, this is it. Last question. Listen carefully or read carefully. Which is not, not an example of convection? Is it our popcorn, popcorn popper, red triangle? Is it the warm cup of Hot cocoa, blue diamond. Is it a fireplace, yellow circle? Or is it the hot air balloon, green square, which is not an example of convection? So you're picking the one that doesn't make sense. All right, a couple more answers here. Oh, who can it going to be? Who's it going to be? All right, we're almost there. And again, think of it, what we've learned today, boys and girls. Can you find other examples in your own home of convection other than what we've talked about today? So what is our answer? 
All right, good. It's the fireplace. Fireplace is radiation, remember? So you were close if you um, almost got that one. Let's see who was our winner. Top score for that one. Let's see. Da, 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 third, Alyssa. All right, good try, Alyssa. She kept the lead for a while. Oh, let's see. How did she get a tie, maybe? Who could it be? The number one on the podium, Tanner. All right, he came from behind. <laughs> All right, Tanner, good job. And look at our runners up as well. Fantastic work, you guys. Okay, so we're gonna wrap things up here. And I want us to kind of go back to our objectives that we talked about earlier. Yes, we did learn about different ways energy moves. I think that was clear from our Kahoot gang. Um, we also learned that with the way energy transfers, that heat always rises. So those temperatures um, are going to affect different things. Hotter on a, a higher floor of a building than on the bottom floor. And then hopefully you were able to build a solar tower with me um, that got to, got to spin your wheel. Now, if you came in late or if you want to maybe stop and do this later on, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have a YouTube channel. So if you want to search up um, CVESD Innovation Instruction, our YouTube channel has plenty of videos and playlists from the beginning of the school year as well as stuff from even the end of last year for our first Innovation Week. Um, please feel free to have your family members like and subscribe what we're doing here because um, all this stuff here is, is great STEAM activities that you and your family can be doing. And as a matter of fact, next week we're going to continue our innovation instruction with another teacher. Her name is Ms. Christy Bystreck from the Hydro Station, fifth graders, if you're, you've already been there, kudos to you. Um, next week, she's gonna be talking about water. So be with us next Friday, the 30th, for building a water filter at one o'clock in Teams. Um, if you're not on Teams or family members are watching someplace else, please encourage them. You do not have to be part of our school district to join us. We would love to have anybody and anyone come in and watch what we have to do here. So that pretty much wraps it up for what we're doing this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed building a solar tower and joining me. Um, again, feel free to tweak your projects. We would love to hear more about them on our social media as well. Otherwise, stay safe out there, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye.